Paper foundation piecing is a good skill for beginners to learn as it helps with sewing accurately. There are many small projects that you can make with paper foundation piece blocks. In this video, I'll show you how to paper piece this flying geese block with three triangles. Finish size for this pattern is a two and a half by three inch rectangle. You'll want to download a copy of this pattern at learnhowtoquilt.com under small projects or under beginner basics paper piecing. I've I've cut out my pattern on the dash lines. The solid lines are my sew lines. The numbers on the pattern show the order in which to sew my fabric pieces. When choosing fabric for this project, you'll want to look for small scale prints with lots of contrast. I've used the same red and printed fabric in both of these blocks. It looks okay in this three inch block where the triangles are larger, but when we get into the smaller block, you'll see it sort of blends in with the background. When paper piecing, always make sure to press your fabric before cutting and after sewing. I like to take an old postcard or card and fold the dark lines on the paper. Every time I fold this paper, the fibers are weakened. Later on, it'll make it easier to pull off the paper. I also find that this helps with fabric positioning and trimming seams. So I take my card, I'll put it between the one and two line, and then fold that over. I can fold the lines as I sew, or I actually find it easiest to get them all done at once. I'll be following along with these instructions as I cut and sew. You can find these at learnhowtoquilt.com under beginner basics, paper piecing, or you can find them under small projects section. Just a reminder, you always want to press your fabric before sewing. I folded the line between one and two, and I will place fabric number one over the top of this shape. I could cut a triangular shape, but I actually like to cut rectangles way bigger than that shape. In paper piecing, there's no set seam allowance, but you must cut your fabric large enough to cover that whole shape with extras left over. So I can see that that more than enough covers that shape. Let me put my finger on number one, turn this over. I can see that fabric number one goes right here. Let me pin that in place. Turn it over and I need to check by holding this up to the light to see if my fabric covers this corner, that corner, that corner. Take your piece and hold it up to the light and you can see the shadow in the background of where the fabric is. Certainly all three of these corners are covered with fabric. I'll fold the paper between one and two down. I'm going to trim. I'll eyeball an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch from there to there. Doesn't have to be perfect and trim that off. And now I'm ready for fabric number two. Take fabric number two and you can see it's going to be a triangle, but I don't like to cut triangles. I usually use rectangles. So let me cut a rectangle. I can see that this will more than enough cover that two spot. My fabric always has to go on the back. I like to put my finger on number two, turn it over. My fabric will go right here next to number one. When I sew, I put right sides together and the same is true of paper piecing. I need to put right sides together. This piece of fabric, I can't move because it's pinned. So Flip this over, right sides together. I see I, that pins in a way there, so I'm gonna pull that out, hold on to all of this, and turn it over. I'm ready to take it to the sewing machine. Right now, I could sew down this line between one and two, but I am cautious of that. I usually like to put a pin on that line to sort of baste it. If Pin that line, let's turn this back over. Let me fold this piece back. And once again, I would hold it up to the light and check. I wanna make sure that that fabric covers this corner, that corner, and that corner of the number two space. Let me take this over to the sewing machine to sew. I'm using red thread so you can see better. Usually I use a neutral color thread. A larger needle will help perforate your patterns to make it easier to tear later on, but it's not necessary. You can also use a shorter stitch length to help with this perforation. I've marked a little line here. 
where I'm going to begin one or two stitches before this black line that goes between one and two. Let me take my pin out. So right on that line, continue stitching. When I get up here in the point, I'll just keep stitching one to two stitches. I'm ready to take this out. Make sure you trim all of these little threads because they have a tendency to get caught up in this and they're really hard to, to deal with if you don't trim them at first. Let me press this back. You can just finger press it or you could take it over to the iron, but for now I'm just going to finger press that first piece. Now I'm ready to add piece number three. I'm over to this side of the pattern. Here's where piece number three goes. I'll fold the line between one and three. You'll notice these stitches up here because you've gone one or two stitches past. They'll kind of hold up. They even might start coming out. Don't worry. You're going to take care of those when you sew the next seam. So now I trim and I'm eyeballing an eighth to a quarter of an inch. I'm ready to position my next piece of fabric. Fabric number three was about the same size as fabric number two. So I'll cut another rectangle and let's see where that's going to go. Fabric number three is going to go right here. Put my finger there, turn it over. That's where fabric number three is going to go when it's all finished. But I need to sew it together first and to sew I put right sides together. I can't move these two so I'm going to have to flip this one down. Turn it over on this side and I don't have to do this. I could just come in and start sewing that line but I usually like to double check with this pin at least until I get used to this pattern. Let me sort of pin base that line. Let's pull this back. And I already can see this is such a big piece. I know that this piece will cover this corner, that corner, and that corner. Last time I started down in the corner here, doesn't really make a difference. I could start sewing here or there. This time, let me turn it around. I'll show you what happens when you start sewing up here. I'll always want to sew one or two stitches before that line. I just sew right down that line. And when I get to the end here, I want to sew all the way into the number 13 spot, one or two stitches. Oops, that was three, but that's okay. Doesn't make any difference. I'm going to trim these. Let me flip that back and show you what that looks like. Instead of finger pressing this, I'm going to take it over to my iron and press it because I want to make sure everything's nice and flat before I go any further. I've pressed my piece and now I'm ready to add fabric number four. First thing I'll do is fold this down and those stitches right there might not let me fold it down so nice and neatly but I'll fold it as best I can and I'm going to trim. I'll eyeball that quarter of an inch seam. Just go straight across there. I'll take my fabric number four I've cut this ahead of time. It's my rectangle, more than enough to cover that. Let me put my finger on number four, turn it over. I see that number four is going to go right here. To sew, I have to put right sides together. Let me flip this down, turn this over, put a pin in on that sew line. The line that I'll sew is between two, three, and four. Flip this back. Put the fabric up. This is what it's going to look like when it's been sewn. So let me turn this over. And if I hold this up to the light, I can see that that fabric more than enough covers this number four triangle. So I'm ready to sew. Flip that down. Bring it over to the sewing machine. Now sometimes these pieces get caught up in there. So make sure that when you bring it into the sewing machine, you get those pieces down flat. When I sew this line here between two, three, and four, I want to start a couple stitches before this black horizontal line and I want to end a few stitches after this black horizontal line. And begin. I want to be real careful and make sure that I hit the black line here at the tip of this triangle to make sure that I have a nice clean tip there. 
pull this back and I'll finger press this straight line here. You can see that I've got a nice crisp tip right here from this triangle. Let's continue on. Turn it over. The next piece that I'm going to add is number five. Fold that line and the more I sew the harder it gets to completely fold that down. I can take pull back some of those stitches like I did there or just try to eyeball that quarter inch seam. Doesn't have to be perfect. And now here's piece number five. Have my finger on number five, turn it over. This piece will go right here. I'll put right sides together when I sew. Flip that over. Now bring it back on this side. Pin on that line. Bring it back on this side. Check to see if it covers. I can see that it's going to more than enough cover that spot. When I go over to the sewing machine, I want to make sure that I'm holding these pieces when I put it into the machine because sometimes they get caught. For this line, I'll start one or two stitches before this black line and I'll continue on. Bring it out and trim. Flip this back and I'll finger press that. Now, let's say you have a really big seam here and you want to trim that. It's, it's okay to trim whenever you want to. Just make sure that this fabric's folded down and that paper's folded down and you're trimming in the right spot. Sometimes there'll be shadows if you're using a darker color alongside of a lighter one. So see how I'm trimming this? So get that dark red out of the back. It's not necessary, but if you notice a shadow there on the front of your piece, then maybe you'll need to do that. Fold that back. Now I'm ready for piece number six. Piece number six is here. I'll fold the line between four and six. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff back here that's getting in the way, but I've got that folded trim, that seam allowance. Let's turn it over and Pick up piece number six. We'll go right here. That's the way it's going to look, but I'm going to sew. So I have to put right sides together. And now I can pin that and check, but I know now that, that those pieces I'm cutting are more than enough to fit there. So I'm going to chance it by just taking this over to sew. I could put pins here, but if I'm real careful and I hold on to all those pieces, I can get it into my machine and begin sewing. I want to start in one to two stitches past that line. So right on that line and when I finish I want to cross into number 13 again. How you cross these lines here when you're stitching are going to determine if your points are nice and crisp. So be really careful when you come in there. Fold that back. I'm going to take that over to the ironing board and press. I'm ready to go on with the next set of geese. I would add seven, eight, and nine just like I added four, five, and six. I finished sewing on all of my fabric up to number nine and I'm ready to put on the number 10 piece. 10, 11, 12, and 13 are borders that go around these flying geese. This piece more than enough covers number 10. Let me fold on that line. Sometimes these stitches will, will bug you, but just ignore them and just eyeball that seam. Quarter inch, eighth of an inch. And then let me turn this over. Number 10 goes right there. I'll flip that back and take this over to the sewing machine. If you're having problems with pieces getting caught up in the sewing machine, then maybe you'll want to pin them like this. I usually don't use pins, but see how that's pinned and maybe that'll hold those pieces down. Get rid of that pin now that it's positioned. I want to start one or two stitches before that line. And so, make sure to take out the pin before you get there. Pull this up, get rid of those threads. And now pull this down, and I can finger press that. Now I'm ready to do the one up on top. I've cut this big enough to cover number 11. I'll fold down the line. It's going to be tricky because of those stitches. I can loosen those stitches a little, or I could just try to get in there and cut that seam. I'm cutting this seam mainly to help me position the next piece of 
fabric so it doesn't have to be perfect. My next piece of fabric will go here. That line is going to help me position this. So I drop that down. Now I'm going to try with no pins and see how that works. I'll be one or two stitches before that line. And so all the way across, I'll fold that back. I'll take this over to the pressing because I want to make sure everything's nice and flat before I put the last two pieces on. Here's my pressed piece. I've cut these strips ahead of time. This more than enough covers that, but remember you're going to have to cover all the way out to this dashed line. Fold this down. This is when your piece really starts looking like the block. This is where it's going to go. Let's put right sides together. I can pin it, but I think I can get that right underneath there. Now, when I sew this, I want to start past the dash lines. And while I'm sewing on that black line, I want to make sure that I'm really hitting these corners here. I don't want to chop them off, so I want to be real careful to stay on that black line as I sew over those corners. Because that's going to determine if my corners are crisp. And I'll sew past the dash line. Pull that out. Pull that back. And you can see nice, nice corners there. I know that this piece is big enough to cover. Start in. I'm going to trim, pull that back. There I have my flying geese unit. Let me take this over to the pressing board to get it nice and flat before we cut it. Here's my completed block that's been pressed. I'm ready to cut that. I can cut with a scissors, but I usually like to use my rotary cutter. If I'm putting it in a frame like this, I'll use this excess to wrap around the cardboard cutout in there to make it easier to get that in that frame. Here's my completed square. For more information about paper piecing, visit learnhowtoquilt.com, click on Beginner Basics, and go to Paper Piecing.